It's going to be very difficult for Sean McAuliffe to be able to send this up. Wiki wiki wah, wiki 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 wah wah wah, wiki 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 wah wah wah. Wiki wah! If you can hear them, but we have our studio audience back. Can we swing the camera around so we can see them? Just uh, no, that's enough, that's enough, that's enough, that's enough. Back, 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 no. No, I, I, I don't want them thinking they're important. Uh, <laughs> incidentally, if anyone's feeling, uh, you know, a little bit scratchy in the throat or has a runny nose, please, please use the communal nasal swab provided here, <laughs> free of charge for everybody's use at the ABC. Line up, get really close to each other, take a sample, and uh, we'll post it off to, uh, to Greg Hunt's office for processing. <laughs> well, it was, uh, it was the last week of Parliament last week, and for many it was like the last day of school. Uh, they treated it like muck-up day, uh, mucking up any legislation they hoped to pass and, uh, and any prospect of their re-election. It was a time for cutting loose and accusing people of being in league with the Chinese Communist Party or, even worse, the most left-wing-leaning Labour leader since Gough Whitlam. <laughs> yes, if you want to turn off Labour voters, liken their candidate to Gough Whitlam. <laughs> Also, if you come across Br'er Rabbit and he's covered in tar, whatever you do, don't throw him in the briar patch. <laughs> <laughs> they're new, they're new. <laughs> that film came out in 1944, you disappoint me. Anyway, this last week before the politicians all go off to their uh, post-election board positions was also a time for reflection. The Prime Minister, Scott Morrison, remained uh, philosophical <laughs> about the non-passing of his much-promised religious discrimination bill. After popping into a Maronite church for a quick blessing last Sunday, uh, yes, not, not quite as formal as it used to be, those blessings, are they? <laughs> Anyway, the PM uh, took the opportunity to compare the failure of the religious discrimination bill to an old but very relatable Bible story. I feel very much like the woman before Solomon. <laughs> and it's, uh, no, it's great. It's great that the PM, as a man, is capable of feeling like a woman. Uh, having empathy with the trans community who would have been marginalised had the bill passed. Uh, I'm not sure which woman he is in the story, the, the woman who is the genuine mother and doesn't want Solomon to cut the child in half, or the, the one who isn't the mother and thinks it's OK. Um, either way, the PM made it very, very clear... I would rather lay down our attempt to secure those additional protections... ..than see them. Compromised for okay, okay, so just to recap, uh, the baby is his is a religious discrimination bill. King Solomon is Labour, the crossbenchers, and the Liberal MPs who crossed the floor because they wanted to amend the bill, much in the way that Solomon wanted to amend the baby with his sword. <laughs> And, of course, uh, cutting uh, a baby in half would tend to compromise and undermine it. So the, uh, <laughs> the PM, as the rightful mother, kills the bill in the Senate rather than let someone else take over responsibility for it. It's a, it's, it's a beautiful story and well told. <laughs> But the PM had uh, bigger fish to fry this week. Frydenberg, that is. And uh, <laughs> it's, uh, it's on that that I'd like to exercise my freedom of plain speaking. <laughs> OK, well, according to a recent poll, our Treasurer, Josh Frydenberg, is now the preferred Liberal leader on 38.5% of the vote. Ahead of Scott Morrison on 31%. Interestingly, no leader at all outpolled Peter Dutton by 3.5%. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. No leader, certainly the one to watch there. But uh, <laughs> what does uh, this result of this poll mean for the man that might be king? On the subject of his leadership ambitions, only a week ago, Josh went on record saying... I've made no secret um, that that would be a, um, you know, something I'd put my hand up for at the right time, but, you know, we're not looking at that time right now. Yes, but that was then. What about now he looks like romping it in should there be a leadership spill? Former Finance Minister Matthias Cormann worked closely with the Treasurer on many budgets and was instrumental in turning on the faucets that created the last leadership spill, which gave us the gift that keeps on taking, that is Scott Morrison. <laughs> 
<laughs> now he's out of politics. Mr Cormann would be the best person to put this question to. Unfortunately, he's now also Secretary General of the OECD and not available to appear on a fake news show. <laughs> so let's instead ask his former advisor, Darius Horsham. Sean, I know Josh like the back of my hand. He does not have a ruthless bone in his pitifully weak, cowardly body, and I respect him for that. He could no more hold the Scott Morrison than he could a donut up Mount Kosciuszko using the bridge of his perineum. All right. <laughs> what about Peter Dutton? Sean, you are being an arithmetic girly man. The Peter Dutton does not have the numbers. Even if he could get the preferences from someone else, that would only push him up to 14.5%. And even if by some miracle he was able to charm everyone who wants no leader or can't say into switching their votes to him, that only gets him as far as 30.5%, a full 8% behind the Frydenborg. But, but Sean, the Liberal Party are not idiots. No party in its right mind is going to have a leadership spill three months out from an election. Well, the Labour Party rolled Julia Gillard for Kevin Rudd three months before the 2013 election. <laughs> Fair call. Even so, I was surprised to hear him say... You see, we have a leader of the opposition who's trying to sneak into government, trying a small target strategy. Yeah, well, because you could hardly say that the coalition went to the 2019 election with a big policy agenda. It's taken them all the three years just to fail to get their ICAC and religious discrimination bills passed. If they hadn't had the bushfires and the pandemic to respond to inadequately, they'd have nothing to do for almost their entire term of government. John, I think you're being a little unfair. Yeah. While only last week they was hard at it trying to pass laws granting the immigration minister deportation powers he already had and trying to regulate the Facebook comments. Them's not exactly the small biscuits. <laughs> My, my point, though, still stands. The only strategy the government took to the last election was uh, getting some name recognition for the Prime Minister. Scott Morrison. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that, that and having him do this quite a bit. Sean, don't shit on my brown kitten and tell me he's put on weight. I was, I was there in 2019. We absolutely went to that election with a big target strategy. Really? What was it? Labour. And Josh's point, apart from the one at the top of his head, is that now Anthony Albanese thinks he can waltz into government without telling Australians what he plans to do. Yeah, why would he bother when you lot are out there making up his policies on death taxes and mining taxes for him? And this stage, the Coalition are less the government than they are the McKell Institute. Well, if Labor was honest about the awful things they are planning to do in the future, Josh wouldn't have to be dishonest about them now. So it's all, so it's all, so it's all Labor's fault? Exactly. Yeah, well, thank you, Darius, and for uh, coming in the show. Uh, tonight. Uh, please accept this voucher for $40 worth of laser eye surgery from Scotty's Laser <laughs> Eye Clinic. Mm, that serves him right. Fantastic. Mm, I should hope so. And so the government trying to find an issue they can campaign on and having ruled out the vaccine rollout, the rapid antigen test rollout, the bushfire recovery, aged care, wages, grant schemes, the treatment of women, submarine procurement and internal unity have latched onto national security, implying that a Labor government will mean less resistance to foreign interference in our affairs. Scott Morrison claims Anthony Albanese is China's pick to win at the polls. But he's also news polls pick as well. <laughs> So, uh, what does that mean? Does that mean we can expect more intrusive phone surveys? Pernickety Krill from the Department of Foreign Affairs and Trade. You, you, hold, you hold the record for the longest uninterrupted bout of constipation. That's, that's not why you're here, though, tonight. Uh, I want to show you this. My government will never be the preferred partner of a foreign government, Mr Speaker, that has chose to intimidate this country and has sought to threaten this country. Panikini, what are some of the ways in which China is intimidating and threatening us? Well, firstly, with their massive expansion, building weaponry, building islands in the Indo-Pacific. And uh, what are they building all these things with? Uh, steel. And how are they making all the steel? With iron ore. And where are they getting this iron ore? <laughs> Mainly from us. And why are we providing them with iron ore? Well, it's keeping our economy strong. And why do we need a strong economy? So we can protect ourselves from their massive steel-driven expansion. <laughs> Pernickety, I, I don't want to be accused of defat shaming, but I... Th <laughs> I think you're in an abusive relationship with China. <laughs> You need to leave it. No, 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 no. That, that'd only make it worse. That'd make them angrier and more intimidating and threatening. We can't leave it. We've got nowhere else to go and sell our iron ore at these prices. And they do love us. I know they do. They wouldn't still be trading with us if they didn't. It's just that sometimes they get angry with us, like when we banned Huawei. But that's our fault, not theirs. Thank you, Pernickety Krill. And for coming on tonight, please accept this leftover from Dan Tian's airport hampering. <laughs> Couldn't get rid of them, apparently, so that's for you. <laughs> 
Calls from our top spook to STFU about national security have been ignored by the government, with... Scott Morrison continuing to allege the Chinese Communist Party would prefer Anthony Albanese and Labor to win the looming election. As would 55% of Australians, according to Newsbuy. <laughs> so it's a great that despite our differences, we still have so much in common with our Chinese friends. <laughs> but when Mr Morrison used the phrase Manchurian candidate to describe Labor's Richard Miles, his unparliamentary language rightly appalled the guardians of parliamentary dignity. People are watching our Prime Minister on TV and he's doing this sort of crap. <laughs> what has politics come to? Manchurian candidate. I mean, does Richard Miles look like someone who's been brainwashed? <laughs> I mean, I, I don't know the guy, but I'm sure if he's, uh, he's going to murder anybody, he'd be doing it entirely of his own free will. <laughs> now, the government didn't deny they were politicising ASIO Intel, according to the Finance Minister, Simon Birmingham. We don't seek to politicise it unnecessarily. See? <laughs> they don't seek to politicise national security unnecessarily, only when it's necessary to avoid their own unemployment <laughs> by, uh, by hoodwinking us into voting them in for a fourth term. So with ASIO's head saying the government shouldn't be politicising ASIO, and with Dave Sharma's head saying ASIO should stay out of politics, who do we trust? An organisation that operates largely in secret beyond the reach of laws that apply to the rest of society, or ASIO? <laughs> And what does the Foreign Minister, Maurice Payne, recently recognised by the PM as the longest-serving female senator in Australian history? And I should think the PM would recognise her if she's been in Parliament that long. <laughs> and with such experience, what does she think about this joker treading all over her delicate foreign ministerial diplomacy about China with his warmongering and his, look at me, I'm cuter than Josh Frydenberg showboating <laughs> ahead of the next Liberal Party leadership spill? Spokesperson for Maurice Payne, Thumbelina Stent. Oh, Sean, you don't want to pay any attention to Peter. Well, it's a bit difficult when he's foaming at the mouth about communists and how China is a threat to the region. Now, 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 you mustn't pay him any mind. He's just trying to distract everyone from that Order to General's report finding that he's more likely to fund community grants in coalition seats than not. My job is diplomacy, Sean, and let me tell you, I'll need every ounce of it trying to repair our relations with France after Scott shat in the bed over our submarine <laughs> deal. What a maroon! Why, why, is, why is Peter Dutton allowed anywhere near a mic? Microphone. I know, right? The defence is normally where you're sent to die. Presumably that's why Morrison shoved him in there last year. <laughs> Kevin Andrews, Christopher Pine, Linda Reynolds, all walking corpses once they've been tapped <laughs> on the shoulder for that dead zone of a ministry of no return. Well, Maurice was defence minister for four years, but yeah, fair call. Yeah. My point is, why doesn't he stop comparing Xi Jinping to Hitler and get back to doing what he does best? Using his ministerial discretion to approve unsuitable community safety grants. <laughs> Sean, I really do. But I can assure you that Maurice and I and everyone in her department are working very hard every day behind the scenes to mend the enormous holes kicked in our diplomatic relations with the rest of the world by Peter and Scott and Dan Tien and whoever else we've got bumbling about on the world stage. Tony Abbott? Oh, Christ, yes. Him too. Jesus H. Tap dancing Buddha. It never ends. I tell you, it's a wonder Maurice hasn't sawn her own head off. Well, thank you very much. And, uh, and, and Thumbelina, for coming in tonight, please accept, may I offer you, a nice, hot, non-steaming mug of Amazonian biochar. <laughs> Superheated, sawdust, inert, caffeine-free and ideal for carbon storage. <laughs> uh, still to come, men on high incomes to take lion's share of tax cuts introduced by men on high incomes. <laughs> Plus, I interview Tourism Minister Dan Tien about why he's such a gormless prat. <laughs> anyway, that's coming up later. But what about Australia's Manchurian candidates? The polls say Labor look likely to win in a landslide, but experience tells us that Labor will somehow take that landslide and use it as aggregate in a concrete pour for the foundations of another LNP government. <laughs> Fair enough, Labor campaign strategy team, Vagary Bell Chamber, Sammy Twerb and Noblet Mule Puke. Or is it just the usual cynicism on my part? Uh, a bit of both, Sean. We wouldn't like to say either way. Are you confident? No, we are not confident at all. All right, so you're lacking confidence. No, no, we're just feeling exactly the way all Australians want us to feel at this stage. Because they don't like people who are too confident or cocky. Oh, yeah, if they think we've already got it won, they'll make sure we lose. All right, well, that's the conventional <laughs> wisdom, but do you really think that's true? We are very confident that it is. But not too confident. <laughs> we're going to lose again for sure. All right. But the polls tell you that you're going to win. Only if we don't believe what they're telling us. 
<laughs> so as far as you're concerned, the people they're polling are lying about wanting to vote for you? We have no option but to treat them as if they are, Sean. All right, so the voters are untrustworthy. Fickle, petty, moody, spiteful, petulant, vengeful bastards. We have to think that way to maintain our mutual respect. <laughs> well, thank you very much, Team Albo. And please accept these T-shirts on your behalf. <laughs> And for balance, we should also talk about the Liberal Party a little to help them connect with the ABC audience. Case in point, I've noticed that the PM often speaks to us like he's lecturing us. Have a look at this and take, uh, take note of his right hand where he appears to be using an invisible pointer. Over 652,000 <laughs> concession card holders have already accessed... Now, what we thought we'd do to help him from now on is uh, that we'll give him an actual pointer. <laughs> Staying positive and... Believing in the strength and good nature and resilience of the Australian people. So it gives him more authority, don't you think? Uh, not with the New South Wales branch of the Liberal Party, obviously, but still. <laughs> of course, this election is not just about Liberal and Labor, as the days of the two-party preferred system are well and truly over, with a whole host of mutant variations infecting the democratic process. Not only the symbiotic independent voices of cluster of candidates, but the Franken Party of United Australia, which has taken the head of former Liberal Craig Kelly and grafted it onto the wallet of current billionaire Clive Palmer. <laughs> Now, as we know, Clive, uh, Clive has announced he's uh, also going to run himself. Not over with his own car, but <laughs> for the Senate. Now, this means that both he and Craig will be on the campaign trail together, both ostensibly in charge. And I think uh, Derek Jacoby speaks for all of us when he says... Well, I, for one, am very interested to see you. What's going to happen next? Thank you, Derek. <laughs> of course, uh, Clive's been a member of Parliament before, uh, but this was in the House of Representatives, uh, where the seats were a lot more posturepedic. <laughs> Clive, of course, was going to speak at the National Press Club yesterday. Unfortunately, he couldn't do it, but I think it's safe to assume that it would have looked very much like this. Now, Craig Kelly, of course, is still an MP and, uh, I must say, was uh, responsible for a great muck-up day prank on the last day of the parliamentary term when he asked the new Speaker of the House, Andrew Wallace, whether he knew anything about the AFP using sonic weapons on the anti-vaccine protesters <laughs> who congregated in Canberra the previous weekend. <laughs> Asking Andrew Wallace whether he knew anything. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, and in breaking news, the Department of Health has tonight issued an urgent warning to consumers concerning several popular brands of soft cheese. We cross live now to Bavina Jizwax. Bavina, uh, what's happened here could have disastrous consequences. Well, this story has only just broken, Sean, so you can imagine the Health Department is in a mad scramble to get this information out. What's the nature of the contamination? Well, six popular brands of soft cheese have been found to contain a mutated and highly toxic version of the Listeria virus, which can cause severe illness and, in some cases, death. And, uh, and what are the cheeses that are affected, Bavina? Sean, ABC policy prohibits the broadcast of commercial brand names, so... Well, perfectly understandable. Thank you very much, Bavina. Well, it might lead to hundreds of needless deaths, but integrity comes at a price. <laughs> Like most members of the royal family, dolphins are monotremes and give birth to their cousins at home in Punchbowl, Sydney. That's our fact-check unit got closed down with Sean McAuliffe. 11 to 6 o'clock, something. Followed by Maniac Baby. Well, a look at the headlines now from Australia's most obtuse tabloid, The Daily Telegraph, with editor in over his head, Chris Lorax. Looking forward to it tonight, Sean. <laughs> really? Yeah, I have brought in the cream of the crop this week. All right. And when you say crop, is that another of your puns? No. <laughs> All right, so uh, this is the first one here, uh, yes? Oh, uh, yep. Uh, so this is about uh, the Australian Grand Prix banning vax exemptions. Uh, so we went with that. Formula shun. <laughs> <laughs> That, that, that's the, the pun there, see? 
So normally it would be Formula One, but because they're shunning those who are shunning the vaccine... Yes. I, uh, I think the cream of the crop may have turned. <laughs> I wanted to go with that grandatory pricks, as in, as in <laughs> mandatory pri pre pricks pre. Mm -hmm. the, the, the editor in chief said no. Did he also say get out of my office? I, know. <laughs> I work from home, so it was a Zoom call. All right, it's not a it's not a pun, but this one uh, caught my eye. Uh, earliest Homo sapien fossil now even older. <laughs> Now, that, that's bound to happen as time passes. What, do you, do you, you run this story every year? Oh, content isn't really my department, Sean. <laughs> my expertise is puns. Is it? <laughs> <laughs> Completely rental. <laughs> Just a bit of fun about mental illness. Yeah. <laughs> Virus bears fruit for three trillion dollar Apple. Uh, I knew you'd like this one, Sean. Uh, because Apple is a fruit as well as a computer, we were able to play on the double meaning with fruit. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think we pushed it too far? I don't think you pushed it far enough. Why not virus pears fruit for three trillion dollar Apple? Or citrus pears fruit for three trillion lemon dollar Apple? <laughs> That would make the headline meaningless. Oh, I see. Unlike a wolf top bars of pup paradise? <laughs> On the contrary, that makes twice as much sense because that's a double pun. See, it's, it's about dogs, uh, so wolf top, uh, and it's about drinking, so it's a pup paradise instead of pub. Yes, but pub paradise is not an expression, and, <laughs> and roof and wolf don't sound the same. Well, there's only one letter difference. That's the key to a pun. Sure. What, <laughs> what noise does a dog make? Woof. What's on top of your house? Roof. You hear the difference? Yeah, but people are reading it. <laughs> are they? <laughs> well, Woolworths has announced they're rolling out a new feature of their supermarkets across the country. And no, it's not fully stocked shelves. <laughs> Just like keep cups in coffee shops, customers will soon be able to bring their own reusable containers to buy meat in an effort to drive down plastic waste. So too, Coles is trialling a bring-your-own-container system for bulk dry foods, like seeds and nuts. Coles self-spokesperson Gemma Peedy, um, customers have already uh, have to serve themselves at the checkout and now bring their own bags and now their own containers. What other great ideas do Coles have for outsourcing what a supermarket normally provides to its customers? <laughs> Well, Sean, next we'll be encouraging customers to grow their own food and manufacture their own goods at home. That sounds like a great deal. Whether it be some delicious homegrown rainbow Dutch carrots or your own soap from animal fats you've rendered yourself or even some DIY baked enamel cookware you've constructed from iron ore which you've extracted from your backyard and smelted with a rudimentary blast furnace that you've also made, every little bit helps the environment and Cole's profit margin. <laughs> Those overheads have never been lower. At what point, though, will uh, there be any reason to actually come into the store? Yeah, only to pay us, Sean. <laughs> Seems a bit inconvenient for the customer, doesn't it? Well, you're absolutely right, Sean. And, and that's why for increased customer convenience and for an unlimited time only, our long-term plan is to close all of our physical coal supermarkets and just deduct the customer's grocery bill directly from their bank account <laughs> so they won't have to leave the house except to toil in the fields or participate in a more sustainable hunter-gatherer type <laughs> lifestyle. Well, thank you very much, Gemma Peedy. Gemma Peedy there, saying things to you. <laughs> Well, the trade war with China continues with Australia huddling in the trenches it's dug to find more iron ore to sell them. But what about an actual war? If China takes Taiwan without a fight from the US, might they not also pop down and take Australia while they're at it? Or perhaps because of the pandemic, they'll work from home and take us over remotely in a cyber war. <laughs> They've already been engaged in malicious cyber activity in this country. At the click of a Beijing mouse, a water, electricity, sewage telecommunications and banking systems could be turned off as easily as you or I might be if the Australian High Court released a nude calendar. <laughs> Lucinda Gravely-Condiment has more. 
Crane Girdle knows computers and believes he has what it takes to thwart this threat to our national security. Well, as we all know from 2001 A Space Odyssey, in which the villainous supercomputer Hal is vanquished by astronaut David Bowman after he removes the computer's modules one by one until Hal's logic system is degraded and he's reduced to singing Daisy Bell, uh, computers can be difficult to control. But, as we also know from Electric Dreams and, to a lesser extent, Spike Jones's film, Her, uh, in which the AI operating system upgrade is voiced by Scarlett Johansson, computers can also fall in love with you. And, and according to Blade Runner 2049, bear your children. Another nut job who's fallen in love with a computer is Craig Javello. He moderates an online terrorism cell from the library of Box Hill TAFE, where he works part-time as a volunteer toilet attendant, despite several cease and desist orders. Maria and I first started going out after I invented her in my shed. At first, people didn't understand, but that's because she only spoke German. However, this became less of a problem after we moved to Bavaria. Because Craig's position at Box Hill TAFE is unpaid, he can only afford to travel back to Bavaria once a year. He can only communicate with Maria by email, using Google Translate, because he doesn't speak German either. This puts a strain on the relationship, as does his intimate friendship with a new robot he has built, also called Maria. Some people think having a physical relationship with a mechanical device is sick. Don't they, Maria, too? They are wrong. Sexual fulfilment can be expressed in a myriad of beautiful hues. Plus, it beats the hell out of fucking a vacuum cleaner. <laughs> right, Corky? Help me, please, someone murder Sammy Jai. Casper Jonquil is in charge of cyber security at Australia's Home Affairs Department. It's Casper's job to spy on all Australians to make sure they're not texting their junk to each other All hail. or using social media to defame Peter Dutton. Secretly posting on alt-right forums? Well, I knew you had that haircut for a reason. Well done, Pickering. Who the fuck is Tosh Greenslade? Why is he trying to get to people to buy this shitty book? Alan Jones' Facebook page comment section peopled entirely by bots? I'll keep that under my hat, Alan. <laughs> So, who's watching the watchers as they watch the watched? And can we survive going cold turkey thanks to the Peking duck that is China's Asian tiger, Sticky Beak Panda? And with the CCP poised to blast us back to the Stone Age, will that make it easier to access the coal and iron ore we're selling them? Lucinda Gravely Condiment, mad as hell. Mm. Yes, indeed. Well, not coming up because Starstruck is on in a minute. Angry aged care residents fight back. And 95-year-old queen hide-and-seek game not what it once was. <laughs> I'm here. <laughs> and finally, there was chaos for commuters in Sydney this week after a breakdown in industrial negotiations saw the New South Wales government cancel all trains prompting a dire warning from the PM. If people want to hand the country over to unions under a Labor government, then this is what they can expect. Yeah, exactly, for it to be as bad as it is under a Liberal government. <laughs> Goodbye. Do you know that they can't... One doctor, because he's not been double-vaxxed, the hospital in Rockhampton hasn't even got enough doctors to cover the shifts, so people are going into the hospital there to get seen in the emergency, and we haven't got doctors because they won't allow them in the building because they're not double-vaxxed. <laughs> Psychologists are actually being told you can't see patients unless they've been double-vaxxed, but they've always said you can't, you can't even do it over the phone unless they're double-vaxxed. Serious. Giant baby.